Um, welcome back to Computational Genomics Lab. I'm Kit, and today we are getting to the good stuff. So we will actually be running RNA-seq today um, on Fiji, and it's very similar to how you would run it on t your, um, your local machine, but we will be running this on Fiji. So first things first, you've already learned how to connect to it. Hopefully you've already set up a profile, so get into um, your Fiji folder, well, your Fiji server, and let's get started. So the first thing that we want to make sure that we do, um, and we talked about this in some past videos, is uh, we want to module load um, the correct version of Java. So I'm just going to go here and type module load JDK, sorry, open JDK slash 21.0.1 and hit enter. And just to make sure that that took, we're going to do module list and we can see that we are on OpenJDK 21.0.1. So this next thing that I'm gonna show you is a little bit new. So these uh, computations take a long time. They can take like eight hours and it would really stink if for some reason your laptop died or you shut your screen and it ended the computation. And as it is right now, that would happen. Um, so we don't waste a lot of time and computation power. There's this really fun uh, command called screen. So I'm just gonna type in screen and you can see here that it's taken me to a new area, um, screen zero bash. And that will allow me to close my laptop if I ever need to. Just to make sure we are where we want to be, I'm still in my kit folder, so I just did PWD. So that is good. And I just want to talk about a couple of things. So I'm going to list what is in here, and I want to go into my class RNA seq folder. So I'm going to cd into that. And I'm going to list, and I have a couple of files here. So I have a nextflow.config, samplesheet.csv, and timecourse.sh. So I have made this folder that is output dir, and that will make a lot of sense in just a second. So let's look at each one of these files. I'm gonna cat into my nextflow. And this is just a couple of, um, a couple of commands that are in here. I believe that John has a whole uh, video on this, but basically this is a couple of things telling the computer how we want it to run. Uh, this forks here is 10, so we want 10, so we have 15 samples and we want 10 things to run at the same time. So that is what this is dictating. Next, let's just look at our sample sheet. So we're just gonna cat our sample sheet and you just have all of this information, all these FASTA files. Um, so that's very important. And the one that I want to really focus on that uh, will be helpful is the time course. So I'm going to cat into time course .sh. So there are a couple of things happening here. So first and foremost, make sure that where it says mail user equals, that is your email, uh, mainly because if like something fails, hopefully not, or like there's an error, or when it finishes, it will send you um, information uh, about that. Hopefully you'll just get a yay, your pipeline is finished and everything was great. Um, a couple of other things that are important is make sure that you have this all routing to the um, correct folders and that your email is correct down here. But the one that I really wanna focus on is this out directory. So this is your output directory and where all of your information will go. So all the files that get generated will go here. If you remember, I made this output directory. So before you run the pipeline, it is very important that you make a folder where all of that information can go. Um, and put that in your out directory. The other stuff you'll have information from the GitHub on, but make sure that you have a place for your results to go because it would really stink for you to do all of this work and then all of your results just float off into the ether. So those are the files. And now we are about to do the fun part. So we are going to start actually running the pipeline. So I'm just going to do sbatch. And 
do the timecourse.sh because that is our shell script um, that is telling it to look for all of these files and run all of these things together. So sbatch timecourse.sh and enter. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so we got um, the information. This is just saying that it was successfully submitted to um, to the to the supercomputer. So we have the job. The job is running, and we are still in this screen though. So this is very important. We want to detach from the screen so we can do other things. So you won't see me type this in, but to detach from the screen, you have to first attach to the screen. Seems kind of funny, but just remember you have to attach before you can detach. So I'm going to hit control A and then hit control D. And you can see that I detached from this uh, 15578.pts-27.fg-1. So now I can go about my business. If I want to reattach to this screen so I can see what's going on, I can do screen-list. Um, and I have another thing running, uh, which we'll go into, but the one that I want is this 15578. So what I'll type is screen dash R, which is the reattach. And I just copy and paste the one that I want to go back to. So. Okay. And you can see here that I'm back in this screen. Perfect. Um, but I am actually going to go out of it now and show you some fun things that are happening on a pipeline that I've been running a little bit longer than this one. So I'm going to control A, control D, I'm detached from this screen again, and I am going to go up into a different directory. So to do that, I'm just going to CD up one list. Um, oh, I went a little too far out. So I'm going to go into kit and I want to go into gene homics sorry I want to go into my um, NF core and I am going to use a different um, a different pipeline sorry a different command here and it's called tail F um, so tail F is how you can like just follow and see real time outputs. Um, you'll see a couple of things here, but we're also going to cat the file. So tail F would just be tail dash F next flow dot output and oh, sorry, next flow dot out. So tail dash F next flow dot out. You can see that I have this list of things. Um, to get out of a process that is running, you have to hit Control C. Uh, so this won't let me go anywhere unless I go out of it. So I'm going to hit Control C. You can see that there. Um, but if I want to see like everything that's running and everything that's been completed so far in my pipeline, I would just do cat and then next flow dot out. And I get this whole long list of things. And you can see here that I um, have had these processes run successfully and finished. Some of these are still in process. But yeah, that is um, basically how you run the pipeline. And it'll take a couple of hours. So that's why I have the screen on and everything. Um, but yeah, this is super exciting. And I, I can't wait until we actually get to the... Um, the words are hard, uh, to the analysis part, but this is the first step. And now all of the things that you have downloaded and all of the knowledge that you've gotten so far has gotten you to this point where you are literally running an RNA seq pipeline. So that is something to be really proud of. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. <laughs>